Hey everyone, today we're diving into something super important for your health. 15 foods that can cause inflammation. Now some inflammation is good, it's your body's way of healing itself. But when inflammation sticks around for the long haul, we call that chronic inflammation. And that's when things get complicated. Chronic inflammation is like having your body stuck in overdrive. It can lead to some serious health issues like heart disease, diabetes, and even some types of cancer. Many of the foods we eat every day could be contributing to this inflammation without us even realizing it. So in this video, I'm going to break down 15 common foods that can secretly fuel inflammation in your body. Plus, I'll give you some healthier alternatives so you can make smarter choices for your health. Let's kick things off with a food that's become a staple in many diets, corn. But not just any corn, we're talking about genetically modified corn, or GMO corn for short. The problem with GMO corn is that it's often loaded with pesticide residues. These residues can wreak havoc on your gut, killing beneficial bacteria. This imbalance can lead to inflammation throughout your body. GMO corn is found in many processed foods, so opt for organic corn whenever possible. Let's talk about cooking oils. Oils like extra virgin olive oil and avocado oil are healthy and fight inflammation. But refined vegetable oils like corn, sunflower and soybean oil can contribute to inflammation. These oils are high in omega-6 fatty acids. We need omega-6s, but we consume too many and not enough omega-3s. Switch to healthier oils like extra virgin olive oil, avocado oil or coconut oil. Who doesn't love a little something sweet now and then? But when it comes to inflammation, sugar is public enemy number one. Sugar is highly inflammatory. Your body releases inflammatory messengers called cytokines. This can lead to weight gain, diabetes, heart disease and more. The best way to reduce inflammation is to cut back on sugar. So, you're trying to cut back on sugar, that's great. But before you reach for those artificial sweeteners thinking they're a healthier alternative, pump the brakes. Artificial sweeteners might seem like a good idea at first because they don't have any calories, but they come with their own set of problems. These chemical imposters trick your taste buds into thinking you're eating something sweet, but they don't provide any nutritional value. Artificial sweeteners can disrupt the balance of bacteria in your gut, just like those pesticide residues we talked about earlier. Plus, some people experience digestive issues, headaches, and even mood swings after consuming artificial sweeteners. So what's the solution? The best way to sweeten your food and drinks naturally is to use whole unprocessed sweeteners like dates, honey, or maple syrup in moderation. Let's talk about trans fats, the villains of the fat world. Trans fats are created when liquid oils are turned into solid fats through hydrogenation. But here's the problem, trans fats are terrible for your health. They raise bad cholesterol and lower good cholesterol, increasing heart disease risk. The best way to avoid trans fats is to read food labels and avoid partially hydrogenated oil. Now this one might be a bit controversial, but we need to talk about dairy products. For some people, dairy can be a great source of calcium and protein. But for many others, dairy can actually contribute to inflammation. Dairy products contain a type of sugar called lactose, and many people have trouble digesting lactose. This can lead to digestive issues like bloating, gas and diarrhea. Plus, many dairy products are loaded with hormones and antibiotics, which can further disrupt your gut bacteria and contribute to inflammation. So what's the solution? If you're experiencing any digestive issues or other symptoms after consuming dairy, 
it's worth experimenting with a dairy-free diet to see if it makes a difference. Chapter 7. Non-organic meat. The hidden source of inflammation. Non-organic meat, which is the most common type of meat found in supermarkets, is often raised in crowded, unsanitary conditions and fed an unnatural diet of grains and soy. This type of farming practice can lead to inflammation in the animals, and when you consume their meat, you're also consuming those inflammatory compounds. Plus, non-organic meat is often treated with hormones and antibiotics, which can further disrupt your gut bacteria and contribute to inflammation. So what's the solution? Whenever possible, opt for organic, grass-fed and pasture-raised meat. Chapter 8. Processed Meats – The Inflammatory Offenders Processed meats are meats that have been preserved by smoking, curing, salting or adding chemical preservatives. While these meats can be tasty and convenient, they're also one of the worst offenders when it comes to inflammation. Processed meats are often high in saturated fat, sodium and chemical additives all of which can contribute to inflammation. Plus, they often contain nitrates and nitrites, which are added to preserve color and flavor, but can form carcinogenic compounds in the body. So what's the solution? The best way to reduce your intake of processed meats is to limit your consumption or avoid them altogether. Chapter 9. Alcohol. The liquid inflammation amplifier. While a glass of red wine with dinner might have some health benefits, excessive alcohol consumption can be detrimental to your health, and yes, it can contribute to inflammation. Alcohol is metabolized by your liver, and when you drink too much, it can overload your liver, leading to inflammation and damage. This inflammation can spread throughout your body, increasing your risk for a variety of health problems including liver disease, heart disease, and certain types of cancer. Plus, alcohol can irritate your gut, disrupt your sleep, and weaken your immune system, all of which can contribute to inflammation. So, what's the solution? If you choose to drink alcohol, do so in moderation. And remember, moderation is key. Chapter 10 Refined grains, the stripped down inflammation triggers. Refined grains are grains that have been processed to remove the bran and germ, which contain most of the fiber, vitamins and minerals. This process leaves behind the endosperm, which is mostly starch. Refined grains are quickly digested and absorbed into your bloodstream, causing a rapid spike in blood sugar and insulin levels. These spikes can lead to inflammation, insulin resistance, weight gain, and an increased risk of chronic diseases like type 2 diabetes and heart disease. So what's the solution? Choose whole grains whenever possible. Chapter 11. MSG, the flavor enhancer that can cause inflammation. MSG, or monosodium glutamate, is a common flavor enhancer added to many processed foods, restaurant dishes, and even some spice blends. While the FDA considers MSG to be safe in moderate amounts, some people are sensitive to MSG and experience adverse reactions after consuming it. These reactions can include headaches, nausea, sweating, flushing, and even chest pain. So what's the solution? The best way to avoid MSG is to read food labels carefully and avoid products that list MSG as an ingredient. Chapter 12. Refined salts. The silent contributors to inflammation. Salt is essential for life, but not all salts are created equal. Refined table salt is heavily processed and stripped of its natural minerals leaving behind pure sodium chloride. While we need some sodium in our diets to maintain fluid balance and blood pressure, 
Excessive sodium intake can be harmful. High sodium intake can lead to water retention, high blood pressure, and an increased risk of heart disease and stroke. So, what's the solution? Choose unrefined salts like Himalayan pink salt or Celtic sea salt, which contain trace minerals and have a more complex flavour. Chapter 13 Soy products such as soy milk, tofu and edamame are often touted as healthy alternatives to dairy and meat. However, soy is a controversial food that can have both beneficial and detrimental effects on health, depending on the form it's consumed in and individual sensitivities. One concern with soy is that it contains isoflavones, which are plant compounds that can mimic the effects of estrogen in the body. Additionally, most soy products are genetically modified, and as we discussed earlier, GMOs can contribute to inflammation. So what's the solution? If you choose to consume soy, opt for organic fermented soy products like tempeh, miso and natto. Chapter 14 Artificial food colouring is added to many processed foods, candies, beverages and even some medications to enhance their appearance. While these vibrant colours might make food look more appealing, they come with potential health risks. Artificial food dyes are made from petroleum-derived chemicals, and some studies suggest that they may contribute to hyperactivity in children, allergic reactions, and even cancer. While more research is needed to fully understand the long-term effects of artificial food colouring. It's best to err on the side of caution. So what's the solution? Choose foods that are naturally coloured or coloured with natural pigments like beet juice, turmeric and spirulina. Chapter 15 Processed snacks like chips, crackers, cookies and pastries are often loaded with refined grains, sugar, unhealthy fats and artificial ingredients, all of which can contribute to inflammation. These snacks are often low in nutrients and high in calories, leading to weight gain, nutrient deficiencies and an increased risk of chronic diseases. Plus, the high levels of sugar and refined carbohydrates in processed snacks can cause blood sugar spikes and crashes leading to energy slumps, cravings and mood swings. So what's the solution? Choose whole unprocessed snacks like fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds or yogurt. So there you have it, the 15 common foods that could be secretly fueling inflammation in your body. Remember, chronic inflammation is a serious issue that can lead to a whole host of health problems down the line. But the good news is that you have the power to fight back. By making simple swaps and choosing healthier alternatives, you can reduce inflammation, boost your energy levels and improve your overall health. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up, share it with your friends and family. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more health and wellness tips and be sure to let me know in the comments below which of these inflammatory foods are you going to ditch starting today? Let's support each other on this journey to a healthier, happier you.